G'day, Chief. I've received an email from a listener this week who's got a very tricky problem. A rooster at work, a colleague who is very difficult to deal with. So I asked him a few questions via email. We've gone back and forth a bit, and I said, you've got to describe this character to me so we can we can see if we can wrap an episode around and help you deal with it. You know, he says, uh, his, my, the, the listener's name is Damien, and Damien goes on to talk about his colleague whose name is Wayne Kerr. And he says, mate, the guy is Teflon. He's useless, but he has power. He takes credit for others' work, talks talk, but won't walk the walk. He's really nice to your face, but will bag you behind your back or source info from you to use or bag others. Um, They manage to never make decisions and yet have the authority to do so. Um, Anyway, they're basically a psychosociopathic chameleon all about presenting their own best possible image to those with the power to promote while everyone else is either competition or uh, utility. Well, this uh, Mr. Kerr looks like a really challenging individual, Damien. And look, I've thought a lot about this because I think, let's be honest, in our careers, we've all had at some point the opportunity to come across a bit of a character like this to, to different levels of degree. And gee, isn't it be nice to really understand how to deal with them? So I'm going to just lay out a few things for you about how I think the best way to respond to guys like Wayne Kerr are. Now, First and foremost, we're going to understand the real reasons behind their behavior. What's actually going on here? You know, if someone's a sociopathic chameleon, there's a reason for that. And most likely, and you've got to test this out through what's going on for them, is there's probably a fair amount of insecurity going on. They're not that comfortable in their own skin in that job. And that that might be something from their own personal history. It might be capability. Um, it could be anything, it might be a level, level of pressure they're under, it might just be a way they've operated their whole career and found it to be pretty effective. Like, if they've been able to shapeshift their whole career and sort of move about and actually get results, they're just going to keep repeating that behavior. In fact, it's being reinforced as effective by the business or people that have promoted them previously. We can be in business incredibly good at tolerating low performance and bad behavior. And in this case, what I say, tolerate, it's not really about tolerating. When someone's behaving like this and others are letting them get away with it, you are fully endorsing it, fully endorsing it. So if their boss is not holding them to account, not giving them feedback that their behavior isn't working or isn't effective or isn't very collegiate, then that behavior is being endorsed. So never forget that, that there's a bit of a system around what's going on here that's supporting their behavior. So what actually goes on is if someone's a bit insecure um, and things aren't going so well for them, the first thing to remember, and I always say this, is the outer chief is a reflection of the inner chief. If they're uncomfortable about who they are, they're uncomfortable in the real world, then that's what's going to come out and what we see. But it might not be exactly that. They're going to put on a facade. They're going to try and make it really hard for people to see that, to cover it up. The thing about power, and this is when they go through levels of authority into more senior roles, is that power makes you more of what you already are. Same with money. You know, the the founder of Spanx, she's got this fantastic quote. She says, money makes you more of what you already are, and power is the same. So if you've got an individual that's coming from a place of fear and insecurity, and you give them more power, what's going to play out? I need to be more loved. I need to create this sense of power so I'm not having this fear. And I put up all sorts of weird behaviors in the real world. Like they'll keep people off balance. They'll might say inappropriate things. They could be really aggressive in the real world and public behind closed doors. They're they're just the nicest person you've ever met, making it really hard for you to connect with them or give them feedback. Just remember, this is what is going on for that person. Okay, now you've got to do a few things first before we jump in and assume that's what's going on. So I want to talk you through three steps because the most important thing here is the first thing is, are they in your critical path? Does that mean, are they really a problem for you or are they just annoying? If they are a problem in getting results, in leading your team, in making the company happen, you know what, okay, you've got to do something. If they're not, they're really out of the critical path, Mate, put your energy somewhere else for the time being and just leave them be. It's probably not your job, right? Uh, There's the old saying, you know, the the master will appear when the apprentice is ready. And if they're not quite ready, then that's all right. However, if they are in your critical path, 
then it's time to do something I love doing in the business world, and that is run some social experiments. What that means is take control of the dynamic in the relationship by planning some very specific actions that will lead to a response from the individual that is different to anything you've seen before. The key here in all social experiments is never to do anything you've ever done before. If you speak to them in a certain way, you respond in a certain way, you can't do that anymore. You've got to change the pattern of the relationship. Now, what I found with individuals like this is first and foremost, keep yourself pure in spirit and intention. Look, you can throw them under the bus if you really want to, but to be honest, it doesn't look good for you and it doesn't look good for them. It's pretty unbecoming of a, of a chief, right? So we want to be the very best version of ourselves as we approach these Wayne Kerr types, okay? Now listen, first and foremost, my first rule is at the beginning, do not embarrass in public. Do not put throw them under the bus and not make their life a misery. They will find a way to recover and get you back, right? Don't do it. You don't want to create an enemy, Okay. The first step in social experiments, and there's three steps here, right, is to support them as best you can and earn their trust. Now, how do you do that? Behind closed doors, create a bit of a trusting relationships. Share some of your own vulnerability. What's hard for you? What do you find difficult? Because what you're trying to do is open the door to them sharing some of their challenges, what they're battling with, why they might be behaving in a particular way. You can ask questions like, hey, that project you're running, how is that going? Is it all right? Can I help you with that? I found those projects really hard. You know, maybe you're battling with, you know, with Joanne over in marketing or Bob over in supply chain. Maybe there's something there that you can do to open a conversation to help them deal with some of their internal challenges. Be a real good friend to them and just see what happens. What I've found is a lot of these people, you know what? They talk like Tarzan, but they walk like Jane. Like it, it, They're not really that tough and not that hard. When you actually seek to understand them and maybe put on a bit of a stronger facade yourself, they tend to crumble. Not all the time, but if they do, that's a nice little way to start. So ask them specific questions, share some of your own vulnerability, see what happens. If you get a good positive response, you might be in a situation to work with them behind closed doors to help them improve their reputation. The more deeper trust you get, the more you can say, you know what, I think when you did that, I don't think you know, that, that Raylene over there really understood what you were saying. Maybe you've got to go and rescue that situation, okay? So that's how we start out. Secondarily, what we then want to go to is, if that's not really working, try and encourage some 360 feedback. I know in, in the text messages that, that uh, you sent me that perhaps this is something you've already tried and has been effective for you in the past. So look, again, to do some 360 feedback or some feedback sharing sessions where each of you line up opposite each other and give some feedback to each other. Now, one of the keys to feedback is deep levels of trust. The more trust you have, the more willing people will be to hear. Now, if you have no trust in an individual, generally you do not hear or, or they don't hear your feedback. They just block it and say, that's a good opinion you've got, mate. That doesn't really apply to me. It's not really true. You don't get me. You've got to show that you get them. You've got to show that you understand what's going on and what they're trying to achieve. So stage two is to go to some level of more formal quality feedback where they get a sense that perhaps things aren't what they are. You've got to create some dissonance, some, something that says, hey, things aren't right here. Now, if in that feedback process you can use some some evidence to, to give them some detail about how their personal brand or reputation is not as good as they think it is, that perhaps, you know, maybe other people don't have the best opinion of them, then that can be really powerful for individuals. But if you do that, really go back to keeping the spirit true, that you're there to help them be the best version of themselves, that, that you really want the best for them. If you maintain that, that real growth mindset that they can change, then it'll, it'll land. If it doesn't land, go back to your process and what you're doing. Now, that's step one and step two, right? So first, seek understanding, seek to build trust and do something behind closed doors. Then go to 360s or open feedback sessions within a group or direct one-to-one -one conversational feedback. And then stage three is if this person is in your critical path and they are dominant and they are 
really owning a room and it's costing the organization uh, results, it's costing everybody happy, it's an anchor chain on the business, then that is when I would go for some sort of public domination. Well, domination's the wrong word, but a public challenge with rapport and respect. Use a bunch of detailed evidence, so maybe you're in a really important team meeting and this is a peer, I'm guessing, or something like that, then you would need to provide some hard evidence and respectfully challenge them and show that what their, their particular angle or the, the strategy they're pushing or their results are simply not working. You would need to be very well prepared for this and steel yourself because there would probably be a pretty solid response. But open debate with the right spirit is absolutely okay in business. In fact, I would fully, I would fully promote doing that as a, as a team. But you've got to get the trust right. So the more you can build that trust, the easier that will be. Those conversations can be difficult. There's a lot of factors involved. There's politics involved. But if it's costing the business and costing the team, then you need to do something pretty solid at some point. Righto, Damien, mate. I hope that helps. Thanks for your message. If anyone else has got someone in the world that you know is dealing with a Wayne Kerr type, then you know what? Send them this episode and hopefully they can get a bit of traction and help the Wayne Kerrs of this world because remember, they're the ones that are probably battling even more than you on the inside. You know, they don't get to go home and feel great about themselves. So let's give them a little bit of a helping hand. And you know what, Chief? Just make sure that you're not doing any of that. If you're feeling insecure or maybe doing some shape-shifting at work, just have a real deep think about what your reputation might be because we all want you to be successful. Righto, Chief, that sums it up for this week. Can't wait to see you next week.